it on Facebook? Uh, no. Yeah. I will. Go ahead and do that. I want to see what the reach is there. Do, do, do. I just okay. updated. All right. Are we going? I'm good. Did you tweet? I, will, I did. I will trim, trim this. People are coming in. Yep. I wonder if people will notice that there's another one. All right. Okay. Shiny. Oh, I tell you, I got a new mouse. Did you see this? What's in it? Oh, that. This is the, the the space aged Logitech M Master. I never I never liked Logitech mice. You know, I know I it, it's it's. I didn't either. Digital. But somebody okay. swore by this mouse. Really? And I'm I'm starting to get sold. If you look right here, it's got a um, horizontal scroll thingy. Yeah. It's got this this kind of cool geometric thing here. Yeah. Is a button itself. Okay. So your hand sits on it like this. Yeah. And you can squeeze. And you can squeeze down, and yeah. then and then do. This is the best part. You can do gestures. So you squeeze with that right thumb, and then move to the right. Uh huh. And it moves uh, to uh, it, it it moves to the next virtual desktop. I've been through so many mice the last four years that I have like a drawer that's full of eighty dollar mice. That it's, I mean, it's kind of obscene, really. So, I mean, I have, I use this one all day, which is the surf, the um, Arc Touch Surface. Yeah, I edition. love that mouse. Great mouse. Um, and on my desktops now, here and at home, I have the new um, Natural Keyboard Ergonomic Sculpt yep. keyboard. Yep. And this the, one right here. That that yeah, I I hated it at first, and then I gave it another go, and I really. Too. I hated it too. I, I like thought it. it was impossible to code with, yeah, but it's yeah. better. Yeah, and then the mouse that comes with that. I now have that here at home, and I got my wife one as well, and I really like that mouse. It's chubby, and it's got you know nice thumb buttons. But now I have like a touch mouse that is sitting there, which was like seventy dollars. That's doing nothing, and mm, I have one tragic. of those presenter mice that was eighty-five dollars, doing nothing. And I have like three other optical mice, Microsoft mice at home that are all doing nothing. So it's just one of those things, you know. Yeah, I've got. I, I you know I'm always trying to just optimize, right? Like I tried this one, the Anchor yes. vertical mouse. Yeah. Very nice, very simple mouse, but it's the handshake mouse. Yeah. Um, and then I've got the one that you pointed out. That's my Surface one. Yep. And then this classic. Oh, the original lock. Yeah. This is a beautiful wow. mouse. I mean, that was just. That won a bunch of design awards and stuff. Oh too. yeah, it's brilliant. Oh, you got a mouse museum going there. I do have a mouse museum, but I've have got you a lot of. Three D printed any mice yet? I've got good That's reason to. Really but seriously though, this thing is just sublime. Um, oh, and the other thing that's cool, yeah. the scrolly deal yeah. goes between smooth scrolling and ratchet, like click, 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 click. Um, so ratchet is for like fine, fine grain control. Yeah. But if you spin it fast, yeah, the, there's a motor inside, and the ratchet moves away, and then it's a smooth scroll. Interesting. So if you flick oh. it, it doesn't go, which is be annoying. It stops doing that, and then it goes smooth. So it knows it's ballistic. <laughs> So you can go click, 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 and then go smooth. It's pretty, pretty snazzy. I got a Kickstarter idea for you. You got to design you got? a mouse that that detects when a, a page is scrolled or a scroll jacking you. You know what I mean? And like yeah. overrides that. Yeah. And lets me scroll the page. Hey, here's a great question here. Uh, Lucas is saying I usually go to live.asp.net, but I still have to hit refresh when this actually starts. Have we thought about a way with? Yes. To just have, have a, it, like, how do you do that? Do you push out with SignalR? We, I had, a, there's a whole, there's already a pull request that was done months ago, so I just haven't sat down and reviewed it and integrated it. So I did like a whole spec on how I wanted that to work. Um, SignalR is complete overkill for this, um, so it was going to be. I'm glad you say that because that's what Javier and I did with .NET Conf. Yeah, yeah. So I, it was a, it was well, but .NET Conf was a fixed like period of time over two days where it was constantly people were watching. Yeah, where well, the idea was we would we would go yeah. to the next episode like Netflix. Right. And we pushed the new right. URL over SignalR. Yeah. Well, what I, what I wanted was something that was because we have the whole the page has the time it counts down to when it is. Yeah. You can do like a smarter algorithm, which is like when I get within so many minutes, 
of yeah. the start time flip into a pole mode, and then once it flips into the standby state, go into a continuous pole until, and maybe you know, maybe you signal at that point, and then until it comes up live. But it's just yeah, for the, you know, just hit FO. <laughs> well, okay, so that's not very sensitive to our customer needs. <laughs> hey, we do this out of the goodness of our hearts. People will like what they know. I'm just kidding. Um, so it sounds like there's a pull request, and some help would be appreciated. Well, the, the pull request is there. I, I believe it works. I gave him some initial feedback, and he made some changes. I just haven't had the time to sit down for the three. I just, if, and what I mean to say by I haven't had the time is it has not been a priority for me. Well, no, because so. you've been kind of shipping stuff. Yeah, yeah, and like I know I'd love to go and do it because no doubt when I actually sit down and look at it, I'll want to make some adjustments and stuff. So it's not just oh, I'll go and spend ten minutes. It'll be like an evening where I sit down and do it. And hey, actually, here's a feature request since John is here. This is your new task, John. All right. Can you make Twitter card integration for live.asp.net so that people can watch it live inside of of uh, the Twitter? I don't know if Twitter card works with live video. But it would work with YouTube videos, which we could maybe. probably make that work. Actually, mm -hmm. you uh, want to look into that in your copious right. spare time. We also <laughs> need to do the work to move it off your um, channel at some point. Yeah, I gotta figure that out. I think what we need to do is honestly come up with a with a channel. I don't think ASP. Well, this is a good question to the audience, but also to you guys. We don't need an ASP.NET channel and a .NET channel. It could just be one Dev Div YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know. DevDiv is enormous. Okay, so one, one .NET YouTube maybe. channel. Maybe. .NET is enormous. Like, are we going to start talking about .NET .UWP apps? Right, but if we had playlists for each thing, I mean, why have channels when you could have Oh, playlists? sorry. Okay, so maybe not one show, but one channel. No, 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 no. To be clear, not one right. show. Sorry, but, but this is on my personal YouTube. Misunderstood right you. Now. Yes, mm -hmm. that, that could very well be... YouTube. Yep. Second thing, interesting point, uh, is a gentleman from Iran who cannot watch this on YouTube. Uh, we had to figure out a way to copy these over to Channel 9. Yeah, done. you said you could like download them and stuff. Could yeah, I need to figure out a way to use the API, download them, and re-upload them. So okay. Figure that I've out. seen there's some like scriptable things to just like bulk download from a thing. You I know, can like bulk download, but I, I don't want to make it a, a, button, a button press. I want to make it like... Automatic. Automatic, yeah. Web job. Okay, uh, so we talk about some stuff? Uh, let's see community real quick, John. Okay. All right. Oh, you always see this community. Kind of I'm going to call this segment sure John Loves Community from now on. I need a theme, like little theme music. I think uh, we need to have segments. This is good. <laughs> do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, so uh, Nick Molnar did a Let's Encrypt thing, and he talks about both, uh, like, hooking up... A certificate. This is not strictly ASP.NET Core related. This is just ASP.NET and works with Azure as well. He goes through IIS and Azure as well. Very long, meaty post. Very good stuff. Um, so then we've got uh, this is, I think, Matthew Abbott. Is that right? Matthew Abbott. So he goes through dependency injection, talks about what it is and how it works in ASP.NET Core. Um, Steve Gordon, so this is a cool post. I like how he kind of digs into um, what's going on with ASP.NET Identity Core, and he noticed as he's looking at it that previously Identity had a salt column, and he said, where to go? Where's the salt column? So he really digs into the code and sees exactly how salt is being handled and stored differently um, as part of the, this, the blob of, of data that's sent out in this buffer array. So... Um, interesting stuff. I learned kind of more about ASP.NET identity, both two and three. From that. Um, Tony Sneed uh, digging into using EF6 with ASP.NET MVC Core or ASP. Sorry, well, we got to talk about this later. But ASP.NET Core 1.0 with maybe some MVC sprinkled in there. So, um, so that's a nice post. Uh, ben Foster talking about multi-tenant applications. So he's actually got a series going here. I know we've talked about this before. It's a hard problem. People have asked about, you know, solving it inside of ASP.NET, and that's not really a good, you know, focus. But this is cool. Uh, this is a nice implementation of how he's doing this. So this is a series, and he's starting off with a great post on that. Um, Nick Soper talking about RESTful API with ASP.NET Core. Um, ben Cole, uh, first of all, he's got some, let's look at that again. Oh, it doesn't do it. Yeah, there it is. He's got a logo yeah. that won't quit. 
Um, so he's talking about uh, Autofac um, with ASP.NET Core. Um, so, you know, kind of a short post, um, but, but nice explaining how to set that up. Uh, Eric L. Anderson with an Angular 2 quick start uh, with ASP.NET Core. So this is nice to see, you know, as ASP or as Angular 2 progresses, nice to see people, you know, integrating the two. So that's cool. Uh, I wanted to point this out. You know, you guys did uh, a follow-up uh, podcast last week. So this is the uh, Hansel Minutes talking about ASP.NET Core 1.0 on Hansel Minutes Show. 33, point, 33 uh, minutes, 51 seconds of goodness. Is that the new uh, official Damien Edwards headshot? It is the new official Damien it... Edwards headshot. Yeah, I, I got updated all my online social presences to that this week. Lovely. That's a it's a good one. Uh, I like the one that showed up on my Facebook feed a little better, but I'm not sure if that was you. So. Is this, what, that is the... What? <laughs> That's the same one. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, no, so this on the is... Facebook, there's a problem because it caches the last show, so oh, a young, I see a young you lady's face about. showed up instead. I yeah. forgot. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this is in the announcements repo. This is if you want technical details about package renames and stuff. Um, uh, Alon opened this issue, and there's little discussion here, but you know, just talking about like what technically is getting changed in there. So that's neat. And then finally, uh, this is Rick Straw's commentary. Um, there's some you know back and forth and feedback on it and stuff. But in the interest of you know this being community stand up, this was some community discussion about what he thought about it. Generally positive, but you know had some some you know ups and downs on his thoughts of the rename. And that is it for me. Magical. Nice. That's a good segue. Okay. Do you want to talk about something specific, Damon, or do you want to go through the copious questions? No, I've got some specific stuff I uh, need to talk to first. So right. we, we, um, obviously, we did the rename last week, and we got a bunch of feedback, and your blog post just got destroyed in comments, um, as in there were many of them. Not, I'm not re referring to the tone. Um, it was somewhat mixed. That's always to be expected. Naming, for better or worse, is incredibly polarizing. Um, so but let's let's just state here and now that the name is what it is, and like there are no plans and really no um, avenues for us to change that anymore. Um, we've kind of done our effort, and that's what we have. So ASP.NET Core is what we're going with, and we're resetting that version to number one, which I think you'd agree, Scott, um, that more than not, people were generally positive with the fact that we would. You know, trying to reset yeah. the version and rename it to something different so we could refer to it. So doing sentiment anal analysis across several thousand tweets and Reddit and on and on and on and on, it's about 80% positive. So yes, it may not be what you like, but it is the majority of people, the plurality of people definitely like it. Now, there was some um, a related feedback that was prompted by the rename, though, that was a little more focused on... Um, RC2 and dates and quality and monikers we attach to things like quality um, and which did get us thinking and, and forced us to, uh, well prompted us to go and have a closer look at where we currently stand. Um, so we are pulling uh, for now, I've just updated the roadmap, uh, we're now uh, saying RC2 is to be determined so we don't have a clear enough picture as of right now, you know 10.41 a.m. Uh, in Redmond today as to when we can confidently say RC2 is going to be, and we're going to take that week by week right now. Um, the effort that we're going through for RC2, for those who have forgotten, is the uh, replat of uh, ASP.NET Core on top of the new .NET Core CLI, um, along with the move to the .NET Platform Standard, or NET Standard, uh, which means all the .NET Core FX uh, NuGet packages, and our own NuGet packages for ASP.NET um, are basically being retargeted on top of this new concept of the .NET platform standard. Um, that work is, while it doesn't really result in much functional change, like from an ASP.NET development point of view, everything from where you sort of call hosting and say go, most of that stuff is the same. Like we're not really doing an awful lot of work there. This is all underpinnings. Um, but it's all in extremely important stuff when you think about creating, you know, the new base of our pyramid for the next, you know, so many years, and you know, Rick's post and uh, others, and Nick Craver, um, a bunch of other people, um, Christian, what's his face? Um, I'm terrible with names. Um, <laughs> yes, have been making the, you know, the very similar points over the past couple of weeks, and you know, they're they're all valid, and so we we're going to take this chance now to um, to step back. Uh, we've stopped what we would traditionally, we would have entered what we call ask mode 
this week, which is where we, we basically forcibly slow down the development process and force all code changes to go through a peer uh, review. Like we sit in this room and we force people to fill in templates about what the change is, why they think we need to do it, what the impact of the change is, a risk assessment, yada, yada, yada. And then a, a bunch of us decide whether we want to let that change through um, under the auspices of this ask mode period. We usually do that in the process of leading down uh, you know, through verification and you know, very, 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 very hard lockdown uh, before we then uh, turn the release crank and give it to people. Uh, we're just not ready yet. There's just too much stuff uh, still churning um, and uh, for us to really slow down that sort of thing. So let me ask you this. There had been some, some negative tweets referring to like deadline-driven development and that we might be trying to drive for a particular date. Is this mm -hmm. a bit of a change that we're not necessarily driving towards a date now? And now I'm it's glad to ask that. I mean, so uh, I think one of the challenges that we're facing with open source, there's a, okay, there's a, there are numerous challenges that we're facing, I think, not just us but the community, in uh, reacting to ASP.NET and .NET becoming you know, completely open source. One of those is the community is seeing things that often, they, well, previously they just didn't see. Like, we often go through these types of resets internally, um, whether they be name changes or underpinning platform resets or things like that, but you often don't see any of these things. Often, you know, in the past, our development times and our release schedules were quite a lot longer, and we there was a large period of time where there were a lot of people at Microsoft working on things where you just didn't know about it. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and so I think what we're seeing is a, a, a partially is, is a reaction to that. Um, also, it's us adjusting to this new world as well, um, and perhaps sometimes leaning a little too far. There, we, I like to think of a lot of things at Microsoft as being a pendulum, and like what often happens is when when we when we choose to react to something, we we try and swing that pendulum to the other side to correct or to make an adjustment. But it's, sometimes it's easy to swing it a little too far, um, and so. Uh, when it comes down to things like date-driven development, another thing that we've noticed with the move to open source is a lot of people have this opinion that, well, if you're open source, you don't drive to any dates. Like, open source projects are masters to nobody, and hence, you should just be able to release when things are ready. And while that's a perfectly fine um, ideal for someone to hold, the reality is Microsoft is still a corporation. We still have budgets. We still have deadlines. We still have... We're, bu we're building a product. Okay, we're building a product yeah. that we have to ship in line with marketing and Chrome blah, blah, blah. and Firefox have dates that they drive towards as yeah, well. Yeah, Ubuntu. I mean, yeah. they have strict LTS well, Ubuntu, dates. Ubuntu has exactly like specific dates that they try to hit. Right, and so as a result of that, sometimes we have to make decisions um, that aren't necessarily you know all that do reflect that type of nature. Now, again, this is a period of adjustment. I think what you'll see us uh, go towards. You know, people are right when they say. .NET Core and ASP.NET Core in some ways is a quite a large reset of our platform. We want to make sure we get that right. So I think it's probably fair to say that we care more about getting it right than hitting any particular date. So I think that's a fair statement, Scott, but it's not obviously, it's also not true, to, it wouldn't be true to say that, well, dates don't matter at all and we're just going to keep churning on this thing until, right, we, right. until, we, until it's mm -hmm. perfect because we have to ship at some point and we have to be able to draw a line in the sand and say, you know what? We have to get this new version of the platform out so that the community and the ecosystem can start, um, in some in some ways, rebuilding on top of this. We can't just perpetually keep, you know, going and resetting or you know not getting to that RTM quality. Um, you know, and some people try and compare us. Oh, you know, you know, Gmail was in beta for seven years. Like, well, Gmail is a very different product. You know, Windows 10 Hello is officially in beta, but it ships in the box and people are using it. But it's a you know, it's, it's a different type of product. We're not asking people to rebuild this. You know businesses or ecosystems on top of these things. So it's never quite as simple. Um, the other thing to remember you know, when it comes to open source is that you know, I've seen some comments from people saying, well, the community should have been given more tr you know, involvement in making some of these decisions. And while I can understand, again, why people might have that opinion, that to me, open source doesn't immediately mean that everyone is involved in everything. Okay? I, I know that's an extreme you know, interpretation of that comment, but Microsoft still owns this product. Well, you know, the .NET Foundation owns the product. Microsoft is the one building this product and shipping it under a brand name with marketing, and they're the ones spending millions of dollars building this product. Um, so when it comes to things like naming, this, you know, we will often ask the community for feedback. So, for example, NuGet was a name that was, you know, coined and determined through uh, a large interaction with the community because I think we initially had a different name, a NuPack, 
which mm -hmm. then turned out to have some legal issues, and so we opened it up to the community at that point, largely as a gesture, um, I think, at that time, because it was one of the things we were trying to do to really kickstart you know, uh, that sort of feeling of openness in .NET back when we didn't even have open source things. Um, and one of the names that came through was NuGet, and we all agreed it was a great name. In this case, uh, you know, the, the guidelines we were given for doing naming didn't give us that freedom, and so we, 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 we did what we did to choose a name, and we ended up where we are. Um, so I think you also pointed out to a couple of people, Scott, it's like, I think hopefully most people can agree that this name is better, even if it's not perfect. I think Brad Wilson um, tweeted something on the lines of, um, no, this is not the perfect choice, but I think it's the best choice, given all the probable inputs that we had to deal with. And so, you know, I thank people for their comments, I thank people for being patient with us while we, you know, work through this process of rebuilding um, our platform and adjusting to doing it in such an open and transparent and, you know, frankly, messy way. We're still adjusting to this and I think the community is still adjusting. So, thank you. I'm not going to apologize. I'm going to say thank you. <laughs> um, and I thank you all for continuing to hold out and working with us while we while we make this adjustment. So, I've updated the roadmap on the um, GitHub repository and it just says RC2 and RTM and our TBD. And my pledge to uh, everybody is that every week I'll give you an, uh, an update as to where we currently are, um, and when we have enough clarity, we will we will we will come up with some dates. The way I like to think about this, the analogy I usually use is that when you're climbing up a mountain, it's very difficult to understand how long it's going to take you to get down the other side, because you can't see what's over the peak, um, and often you won't really be able to figure that out until you crest over the summit and then you can see down the other side completely. The other part that happens when you're climbing mountains is often the, when you're looking up at the peak, you think you can see the top of the mountain and you make an estimate about how long it's going to get there and then you hit a false summit and you crest over a particular rise and you realize that you're actually not at the top yet and you still have to keep going. Um, that seems to me to be a great analogy to how software is in general. And like, There's lots of commentary in the industry about how estimates are terrible and how software estimation is impossible and la 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 and you know this is this is just a product of that and I think what we'll find is in a few more weeks we will break the crest of our summit of this current work that we're doing which is the replat of .NET Core and uh, then we'll have a very clear trajectory and we'll be able to really accurately estimate okay now you know we've hit we've got to a point of um, of, of clarity and you know, a, a good solid base and now we the, the outstanding work that we have is well understood and we can make a more accurate sort of prediction. And when we can do that, we'll we'll choose some dates. All right, cool. So no dates yet. Dates soon. Dates soon. And uh, additional release, or there's a yeah, that's a good point. So I think if in the ideal world, again, like I just got through telling everyone that I don't know anything about dates, and I'm not going to say anything until we get more clarity. But if I was <laughs> to try and look into my crystal ball, I think. Ultimately, I would like for us to have um, one release. So the next release would be one release that probably isn't RC, so not a go live release, and not considered, you know, fully stable in terms of there'll be no, there'll be little change after it. And yes, I want you know, I'll, I'll again, I will apologize this time um, for the changes that we've introduced after our previous RC. But I would like to see us have one stable, solid release that we give to the community with Visual Studio tooling and VS Code and all, you know, all the, the full sort of gamut of stuff um, that, is, that encapsulates the work of replatting on .NET Core. Okay? And so we have .NET Standard, we have .NET Core, we don't have DNU and DNX and DNVM anymore, we have all the new stuff and you can file new and build apps on that and, you can, you know, and we publish a guide on how to move from DNX to .NET Core and all that type of stuff. right? Then I would like to see us do an RC after that, which is you know a true RC, go live release, we lock everything down, followed by a subsequent RTM once we've um, ensured that we've fixed any issues that have become apparent as a result of giving people right. the RC. Because an RC in its purest form, in its correct form, is a release candidate like this could be the release. This could yeah, be. Yeah, like we're, we're giving this to you because we think it's ready. Like that is that. I mean, if you're going to distill down what an RC was typically meant to mean, that's what it is. Now, sometimes that <laughs> it's funny. The opposite thing to what some people might expect actually can occur when you treat an RC like that. The Angular team did this quite well. They had many, many RCs, um, and I've seen XUnit do this on a couple of releases as well because they go, "Yep, we think this is done. Here's the RC." 
It stole jQuery's on this a couple times as well. Please install it, and if you find any issues, log them very quickly, and we'll assess them and fix them. And as a result, they found like four or five or six issues that they felt that they really needed to had to be fixed, but they didn't know until people used the RC. Because the other thing about this increasing quality moniker that we attach to releases is you typically get more and more people using the product as the release goes on, and you sort of narrow down uh, the quality moniker. And so often you won't find you know, very important issues until someone installs the RC, or RC1, or RC2, or RC3. And so in some of the projects I've noticed where they really try and use that pure form of RC, what they end up with is lots of RCs in rapid succession. So in the space of a couple of weeks, there's three or four RCs. Because mm -hmm. they find a very bad bug, they fix it, they turn around, they release a new RC with one fix, and they go, right, here's RC2, please fix Oh, okay, here's RC3, okay, here's RC4. And then basically you know when you're done because you get to a period of, a, of time, maybe two or three weeks after the last RC, where no bugs have come in that you consider to be sort of resetting. So, I think I'd rather do that as beta, and then when it feels like it's RC, then it's, declare it as an actual I mean, candidate. So, I don't know. Like you could, I, I think there are pros and cons to both approaches. Obviously, there's a lot of expense involved, depending on how mature your engineering and release process is and how complicated your product is. Like If you're a JavaScript library like jQuery that you know, compiles down to 50 kilobytes of, of JavaScript versus a complete .NET platform with Visual Studio tooling and a cross-plat VS Code and four different CLRs you know, and blah, 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 blah. The complexity obviously makes things more difficult. And I, I, the one thing I love to tout around here is there's been a bunch of studies that show the number one determining factor in, um, in predicting whether any type of technology-based project will be successful, where successful, you know, success is measured based on was it on time and was it on budget, um, and did it meet the requirements, is size. Like, no other metric will affect that outcome other than how big is it. The bigger it is, the less likely you're, ab you're able to predict how much it will cost and when you will finish. And so we're doing something very big here. So, you know, sometimes the dates and the, the things that we plan to do are very hard to hit. I think that's something that's come up in some of these discussions and some of these, you know, threads and blog posts and stuff is like this is something that w this is a big, big change. Like this yes. is not like just shipping. I mean, even something like MVC had multiple betas and a long lead time, but this is a replat from all the way down to the server and all, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's it's all the client libraries on top and it's changing a lot of stuff as far as how you build apps. Oh, and and to, yep. to the community's point, that should take a little, there should be some time to bake. Yes, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm big on bake time. I'm like, I'm big on, I, I, I think sometimes we fall into the trap of saying, it feels like we're so close. We just have these 14 bugs that we know we have to fix and then we're done. But you have to remember that once you fix those 14 bugs and you get to that you know, ZBB, zero bug bounce, so you're that stable point, you're supposed to then, that's when the, that period of time starts. You know, that's not the end of that period of time. That's the beginning of it. That's the beginning of your bake time. Once you get to that point of stability, that's when you let it bake and you let people use it and we test it more and we try more scenarios um, or we try it on you know, whatever it might be. Um, and that's when you inevitably end up finding things that you have to react to because you now have time to use it in ways that you couldn't when you were still you know, fixing the known issues or you know, finishing the, the designed features. So software is hard. <laughs> and I thank everyone for being patient with us again. But we want to get this right. Over and above everything, we want to get this right. All that's right. It, that's it. Let's, let's move to the next segment. <laughs> uh, so the uh, question is, where can I get the links for the community section that John Galloway did? John, are we still doing, is, is Fritz still doing blog posts about the stand-up with your links? No, he hasn't been for a while. Um, what I've been doing is posting them as a comment on the YouTube post. I think would be better is if we could get them actually in the description. So, um, honestly, we need to get back to doing that blog post again. So, yeah. let's talk to Fritz offline, and if it's not him, it's somebody else. Yep. But... That's mm -hmm. one of the bits of administrivia that we need to do. Updating, yeah. the, updating the Facebook, the Twitter, you know, just like all that kind of social stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not super fun, but we got to do it. So you and I can go and find somebody to do that. We need I entry. thought that that was great value, and I think we all noticed that the page views, uh, not the page views, but the more people yeah. watch the show yep. uh, if we do that. So a lot of those posts do end up on Community Spotlight. You know, I trickle them out after that, but uh, uh, on the ASP.NET site. But yeah, I I usually do. I don't. I think like for last week, you should see them as a comment, and I usually post them like that day or the following day, um, on the 
on the YouTube channel, but yeah, I agree. We need to get a blog post out. And maybe that blog post is just the embed of the video and the community links and, you know, like, don't make it a huge post. Just make it, just get it out there. Okay. Well, next one. Questions. Uh, what are we going to do about deprecating the ASP.NET 5, MVC 6, EF7 beta and release packages in NuGet? People may go and get them and not know about the rename. Should, how do we uh, keep uh, them from stumbling on that? So we, we discuss potentially um, unlisting them. So unlisting them means that if you have them already in a project JSON file, then you'll still be able to restore them because we don't want to break people's build servers. I see, but you can't but if stumble you search, upon them. You can't stumble upon them. So we won't obviously do that until we have the next NuGet.org release. Um, and maybe we won't do it immediately. We'll do it the one after that potentially. But yeah, I, I imagine what we'll end up doing is unlisting those packages um, so that people are pointed towards uh, the new ones. Okay. Cool. Any update on localization? Yeah, I did a bunch of work on loc post RC1. Over the holiday break, when there weren't many people here, I had a chance just to basically spend my days as a developer. And so I did a bunch of work um, to fix some of the consistency and usability issues we have with the localization APIs. Um, that work is all in RC2. Um, is in like the current dev bits. Uh, I added a, a, a sample to the entropy repo. So if you go to github slash acemanet slash entropy, and you just look back through the commits, you'll see I added a, uh, basically it's file new MVC application, which I then localized. Okay, so it utilizes pretty much all the localization features that we've added and has little comments where I've used the APIs to explain how they work and all those type of things. So I encourage people to go and look at that. And the uh, doc team, Rick Anderson, is currently writing the documentation for the new localization system as I speak. Ooh. And actually, uh, there was a comment about documentation. Uh... Vladislav wants to know if it's possible to generate generate API reference from source code. Is there a way to explore the source code without scouring and full texting GitHub repo? So if if he would be uh, if he if he's in front of a browser right now, which I assume he is, he can go up to docs.asp.net, and then down on the left hand side, third from the bottom, there is API. API and if he clicks that. on that, you, he will find the API reference documentation, which is generated from yeah. source. Um, so this was the initial. It's basic. It's, it's basic. This stuff. This is, is the initial there. done. So you, I think you were a part of this work as well. And yeah. yeah. And this was our attempt at using Roslyn and metadata yeah. and sucking it out. So this is an making MSDN style. Yes, and this is an ongoing effort. Okay, but this is the very first publish of that uh, of the output of that process, and this is what we'll be using. Um, to generate these docs, and they'll be versioned just like the rest of the docs. They get generated from source. We still haven't gone through and added doc comments to all of the public API. That's still a work item to be done. So there are there'll be areas where it's missing, and we have to tweak this layout. So there's some information that's not on here that we want, like what assembly is it in or what package is it in. Um, that would be super useful. But you can go look at it now. Very nice, nicely done. Um, okay, Maxime, any news on new ASP.NET courses in the MVA? Uh, in fact, I have an email right here. This is an internal email from a content producer at Virtual Academy. I want to revive the conversation around MVAs and what is now ASP.NET Core 1.0. Based on the changes of the platforms, we should look at re-recording an MVA and begin the process of building out other ASP.NET related MVAs. So, given Core and given the release, we'll probably need to do a beginner one again and deprecate, or as, as uh, Damien says, unlist the ASP.NET 5 one. We should probably do an advanced one for like internals with more of a focus on .NET Core and some, you know, and all the middleware and all that really new stuff. So kind of like an MVC front -end -y, uh web-focused one. App dev, right. An app dev one, thank you. And then a, uh, a more middleware low-level one. And then I think we'll probably need something around cross-platform Docker, like basically, you're not a Windows person, what do you do? Yep, I think uh, the other thing we'll probably want is to do a, a .NET Core one that talks about uh, the CLI and building cross-platform .NET class libraries using .NET standard would be a very valuable one as well, I think. Yeah, so we need to figure that out, but yes, we will do them, and I would suspect in the next three to four months, we'll probably yep. have to do like 
one every two months. It takes a lot of work, and this is the thing. You can either ship software or you can talk about shipping software. So it's a challenge. But uh, hopefully with some changes that we're making internally, we'll try to find some people to uh, put that together. Cool. Uh, what is the ETA for native? By the way, we need to go through this fast, too, because Hunter's calling me. Oh, okay. Uh, what is the ETA for native compilation? Uh, for ASP.NET, absolutely no idea. Uh, my understanding is .NET Core CLI, uh, currently the builds have like the dash dash native flag, um, but the initial release of this will just be native compilation will be like in preview. So there isn't really any medium or long term schedule for that yet. Okay, excellent. Good fast answer. I like that. Sure. Updates on performance benchmarks. I know I saw a tweet or a Facebook. A Couple days yeah, ago. so I got a chance yesterday to do a couple of hours of coding to make some changes to the benchmarks repo, which allows me to run specific scenarios so that I don't get the problem of noisy neighbors within the one application. So that's in a branch right now. Once that's in and we have a stable build and I find four hours, I will go to the uh, perf rig and I'll rerun the full suite and then I will update the uh, perf numbers because I haven't updated them since we hit a million and I want to make sure I get the numbers correctly rather than just do a hastily job of just updating a couple of them. Nice. Uh, da, 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 da. With the replat move to .NET Core, finding out more about the .NET project sounds like a good idea. Anything like this community standup that goes on but focused on those projects? Uh, oh, about .NET what? I think, that, itself. I think mm -hmm. that the question is, like the .NET, the move to .NET, the .NET command line driver and things like that, mm -hmm. is there a stand-up for that? Uh, no, uh, so the .NET, the .NET team has a show they call on .NET, uh -huh. uh, which they have, a, I, they have a YouTube for that. They have a YouTube channel. Uh, I, my understanding is their format's a little different. They talk less about like what like what we do, like the 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 um, the development stuff, and they have guests, and they have like someone come in and they talk to them about a particular topic. Um, I, I'm not sure. We we, we could talk to yeah. them about that. that. Yeah. I think that this is probably the best place at uh, for now. For now, um, but we could probably yeah revisit that. I think. But um, yeah, I think that w w the, when we get this whole thing tidied up, we're going to be spending more time talking about like the things that are um, baked, right? Like yeah. what we're not, what we're doing now is we're talking about chaos. And what chaos at all is that right. has to stop at some point, and then we'll talk about you know the good stuff. The, the, the fog making. will clear soon, and then we'll be able to. The fog will clear. Yeah. Yes, indeed. All right. Um, will there be any certification exams for ASP.NET Core? I haven't even talked to those folks. I would say once I talk to the um, MVA people and we get a course going. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if the certification people want to talk to us and do some certification stuff, it's totally feasible, but very, very, very low on the priority list, mm -hmm. I'm afraid. Any, any, do you agree, John Galloway? Yeah, I mean, that stuff, usually they wait till it's baked and shipping, and then they look at certification, right? I mean, because it takes a while to build that coursework and all that. Yeah, so certification on the list, uh, very low. low on the list, though. Uh, what do we think about Project Rider, the new JetBrains IntelliJ C Sharp based IDE? Uh, we were actually at NDC London when it got announced, and I hung out with Hadi Hariri and some of the folks over there uh, in person. You were there, Demo. Yep. We think it's totally great. Anything more. that helps our community is fantastic, really. Yep. So. More IDEs. Uh, it, I think it raises the, the water level in the sense of uh, it makes. Us work harder. It makes uh, you know. It shows us what IDEs can do. It gets more people thinking about stuff. I mean, think about this for a second. Two years ago, there was Visual Studio, and then there was some hacked together stuff people were doing in Emacs. Yeah. Fast forward to today, and there's Project Writer coming soon. There's Visual Studio. There's Visual Studio Community, which is mm -hmm. pro. It's better than Express. There's Visual Studio Code, and OmniSharp. OmniSharp.net is an absolutely legitimate competitor. I say that in quotes, where We've got ten different text editors where we can do real work, not just well, VS Code about. uses OmniSharp as well. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Visual Studio Code uses OmniSharp. Yep. To indeed, do, indeed. Yeah. I'm just pointing out that like yeah. there's there's uh, in a year and a half, two years, we've gone from one IDE to many, not to mention MonoDevelop. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, all of this is good, and choice is good. Yep. Okay. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, here we go. Ben Adams pointing out that they have API review Google Plus yes. broadcast for the .NET team. Yes. A little different, but uh, from what we're doing, but yes. That's a second uh, that they have. Yep. Baja wants to know what the hex color of Damien's beard is. Uh, do you have your eyedropper handy? I will get on that right away. <laughs> Let me, make, let me make it easier for you. Oh, my zooming's not. Oh, I'm zoomed all the way in. I'd have to actually walk close. Oh no, there we go. Okay. Mm-hmm. It is. Dark. What's that? It's pretty dark. Is he making an emoji? Mm-hmm. Apparently, you're going to be famous. I don't know what's going on. This is really the best use of our time. Totally. Even Hunter is waiting for my one-on-one. Oh yeah, you know he can That's wait. Totally fine. Not a big deal. I give it like <laughs> three one one. For Damien's beard is four e one e ten. There you mm. go. I'm gonna get a oh, t-shirt with that, man. Tell me, tell me, I don't do anything. So I said three one one. It was four one one. That's probably yeah, yeah, yeah. Any what's this one? News about the .NET platform standard remaining work? Um, just that it continues. Um, the .NET core packages, the core FX packages, system.star, are currently being repackaged to target net standard. Like that work is happening right now. And we expect those to, if they haven't already hit the .NET MyGet feed, they will do so very, very shortly. Uh, when that happens, our own packages, the ASP.NET packages, will also have that applied. So we'll go through and like the MVC package will target net 451 and net standard 1.5. Very, it's imminent. 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 Okay. Oh, good lord. I've got to go. I'm looking at this like 50 questions. Maybe take three more. Bobo, can we drop the 1.0 of ASP.NET Core? Yes, colloquially, when you're referring to ASP.NET Core, just say ASP.NET Core. This is the version. Say, you don't say Rails unless you're talking about, oh, Rails 3 or whatever. So, yes, ASP.NET Core, that's fine. I think, uh, I think just to add to that, um, it kind of helped for dramatic effect that we said one last week because we wanted to tell people we're changing one, from ASP.NET 5 to a reset. Yeah. Yeah, it was so. important. It was an mo- important moment in time. Yeah. Uh, I recently tried ASP.NET Core on Azure websites. GitHub deployment failed to disk space problems. What's the story yep. here? This is from Wolfgang. Yes, we absolutely know that, and we are absolutely working on it. Actually, I talked right. to Glenn Conran about yep. that two days ago. We've but already solved it, it internally. Yep. Being worked on. Being worked on will be fixed. Uh, you mentioned .NET 4.5.1. Has the minimum changed? So the current plan is that our packages will compile against 4.5.1 so that you can run them on mono. But our official lowest version that we support, so you can call us for support, is 4.5.2 because .NET 4.5.1 is now out of support. But we will compile against 4.5.1 so that you can continue to run on mono for the time being. Um, however, we will likely default our templates and those things to 4.6. Now, there is uh, one quirk in that right now, which is mo- everyone's Azure images, if they're using VMs and you know, cloud roles and those things, are 4.5.1 because those base images are still being updated to 4.5.2. Um, the other quirk is that when you're running on 4.5.2 instead of 4.6, there you miss uh, a feature in the CLR in 4.6 that flows culture information across asynchronous calls. And so if you care about culture info sticking to threads as you do async await, then you won't get that unless you're on 4.6. Um, there is a workaround for when you're running on 4.5.2, but it's somewhat involved. Um, so we're currently debating how we go about addressing that. It might be that we ship a small package or a, a piece of sample code and we show you how to hook that up if you're going to target, if you have to target 4.5.2 and you care about flowing async culture, and if you don't, you don't have to worry about it. So that's where we currently are with that. All right. Will web forms get updates with new features or just bug fixes, like from a focus perspective? Because I know that we've been added, we've added a number of features to web forms, including Roslyn, async, right. and, and yeah. HTTP2. Is, is there still going to be potentially cool stuff coming for web forms? Um, so because web forms, there's a multi-part answer. If you were to look at things that are actually in the .NET framework, 
the investments in the .NET framework primarily revolve right now around um, what we call platform investments. .NET Framework ships with Windows, so Windows is the platform for the .NET Framework. And so when that platform gains new features, like HTTP2 um, in IIS 10, we do work in System Web, because it's part of .NET Framework on Windows, to support those new platform features. Um, features beyond that, where we, we haven't been doing the sort of large feature investment work like that for a while now. We're still obviously fixing bugs in there, but as we've talked about many times on here, Fixing bugs in the .NET framework is an incredibly expensive um, and involved process because we generally end up breaking something because uh, we fix it for one person and we break a bunch of other apps that we're relying on that you know buggy behavior. Um, so that is complicated. Um, that said, we have out-of-band uh, efforts like NuGet packages where we continue to make targeted investments. Uh, for example, we are going to uh, uh, support um, the new Identity 3 stuff that we're doing in ASP.NET Core. We want to support sharing auth tickets between an ASP.NET Core app running Identity, the new Identity, and a Web Forms or MVC5 app running the previous version of Identity. So we have, we've released a little glue piece there to make sure that that continues to work. And we continue to react to platform changes like when Facebook changes their authentication API, we have to go and retcon and fix the uh, Facebook auth for web forms and MVC prior. So that's the sort of the scope of the work that we're doing. Um, I, I wouldn't expect to see large scale investments in feature areas on web forms or MVC5 for that matter. So for example, someone asked this week, could we, could we backport tag helpers from Razor in core to Razor running in MVC5? Um, technically possible. I don't think you'll see us uh, put the investment in to do that. All right. Christian, would you consider factoring Kestrel and hosting differently so that you might leverage Kestrel without a dependency on full hosting without the HTTP extractions like a Kestrel.core? So there is a Kestrel engine. So you can actually, and I haven't looked at this in a while, and it has changed a bit since I last looked at that code, but there was a type called Kestrel engine, and it is still there, and it's in the ASP.NET Core.Server.Kestrel package, and that is the, that is the thing that you boot. Um, it doesn't, as I understand it, have a dependency itself on the hosting API. It does have a dependency on the core HTTP abstraction, okay, um, which is what he says there, with HTTP abstractions. I think he means he would want those but without full hosting. So I think Kestrel Engine is what you want uh, if that's what you care about. However, I don't think that package, I'm just checking the code right now, I think that package still depends on hosting and, is, and it does. Um, but I'm not sure you need hosting if you're going to um, use Kestrel Engine directly. It's an interesting right. consideration, and technically we could we could do that later if we wanted to. I don't think we're going to make that for 1.0 because you know, our scope's kind of set. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, here's a question that I think is rooted in confusion. Should ASP.NET Core shouldn't ASP.NET Core and ASP.NET Core MVC be merged? i.e. ASP.NET Core equals ASP.NET Core MVC. They are the same thing. Like, remember the whole one ASP.NET discussion, right? ASP.NET Core is the sum of all of its yeah. subparts, of which one of those is MVC. MVC isn't versioned separately, nor isn't it a, is it the thing. Just like, you know, Rails routing. has routing, but yeah. Rails routing isn't necessarily a thing. I mean, I know it's a little bit confusing, but the idea is that there are subcomponents, but they, don't, they are individual... Um, broken out pieces yeah. again. Yeah, I mean, the reality is they're shipped as packages, and so everything is technically separate, but we refer to them as one product. Now, ASP.NET Core includes a bunch of MVC features, includes routing, includes middleware, eventually will include SignalR when we get around to doing that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Is there value in not making them separate packages? Maybe it would be clearer if we didn't do that. Well, the they no, because then the layering you want to be able to pull in now, right? Want. Like for example, for Christian's comment he just made, like we want to make sure that we build things on top of the appropriate things. So MVC right. is built on top of routing, routing plugs in the middleware, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so are we going to rename? Bob's are we going to rename? Oh, I'm sorry. I want to just skip through this one because it's quick. Are we going to it's rename fine. GitHub slash ASP.NET to GitHub slash no. ASP.NET Core? No. no. ASP.NET is the organization name effectively, and that won't change. No. Uh, what about the use source code instead of a NuGet package feature that we were talking about in Visual Studio? So that's still there. You have to do it manually. Um, there's no, you, you cut, there's no like gesture in VS to make that work properly. Turns out requires a bunch of engineering work 
from our side because we have to ensure that um, that the when you take when you when you have a particular package, so you're referencing version RC2 dash blah 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 because you got it from our build server. Um, if you want to switch to source to that, that requires you to be able to get the source that particularly built that package, which you know that's fair, that's easy enough. Just get that commit in GitHub. The flow in effect is you need to be able to build that source, and to build that source, it means you need to have the exact references, the exact versions of the packages that we use to produce that build. That is currently not possible because we purge our build feeds every couple of weeks, our MyGet feeds. So you can't just roll back to a random commit from this November and build it. You can roll back to named releases that we push to NuGet, because stuff that's pushed to NuGet only references other stuff from NuGet. So that would work fine, but we haven't done the work to design that feature out and automate it and have it be perfect. And so right now it's still manual. Um, you have to edit your global JSON file. But it's it still might be one of those uh, later next version yeah. thing. Like it's yeah. going to happen. We think it's an important feature, but stability yeah. first. Uh, the email questions keep coming in. I'm stressing out. Uh, you could go. Box. You what could go. We you... could keep answering. I may have to go because I have. I'm, I'm I actually need to late. go too. I'm 20 minutes late for a meeting. I'm supposed to be. Uh, what? To, here, let me see if I can bang through these fast again. What tools are you using to generate API docs? We're using Read the Docs and a bunch of stuff that we wrote for it. A bunch of custom stuff. Yep. You can go and see it's all in GitHub. Yep. Uh, I don't know a question from Bobo. I don't understand that question. Okay, next one. Uh, what's the plan for authentication server in ASP.NET? We still recommending identity server? We're recommending identity server. All right. I tried .NET Core on Linux recently. I was looking for something like NodeMon. I found DNX Watch. I couldn't get it to work. The Watch scenario is extremely useful. Wolfgang, yes, we will try to get DNX Watch working everywhere. Yeah, but uh, it'll be .NET Watch now. We've rewritten it. DNX Watch had problems on OS X on RC1. Mm -hmm. It'll all be fixed as part of RC2. Indeed. Uh, the ASP.NET team put a lot of thought into docs.asp.net. Um, Restructured text. Have we told other teams about restructured text? Restructured text. We've been singing the... Sh I tell you, Markdown is not what docs should be written in. Uh, but mm -hmm. we have some conflict, lowercase c, conflict in the company right now. Uh, some people feel that uh, the way to go is, is, is Markdown with some, some other stuff, and some people think the way to go is another way, and we're arguing about it. But I think that the, what, the work that's happened, I think, on uh, docs is fantastic. Cool. Do, 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 do. Uh, when we use Bower, it brings all this code from GitHub, referencing one JS file, and we update Gulp, and da, da 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 Is there a best practice? You wrote a blog post about this, I wrote right? a blog yeah. post, Abu. Go to my blog and search for Gulp, and I explain different ways for you to make things easier. That way you don't pull everything in there and make sure you use a git ignore. Mm -hmm. uh, Mordecai is mentioning a, talking to Vladislav talking about source code and the source browser.io and at some point we'll update source of.net the website www.sourceof.net I didn't know that, I didn't know you know that was a thing you didn't nope. see that? nope yeah dude uh, yeah, sourceof.net check it out it's pretty hot okay. uh, source browser goes and takes github and turns it into static files okay uh, Vincent wants to know when it will be completed and shipped during .NET CLI, as we mentioned before, when it's done. Um, Nick Craver, what's the timeline on CS Proj to X Proj references? Part of uh, that'll be part of the next release. That's being so. CS Proj to X Proj is being done as part of the replat on .NET CLI. That's a key scenario that's required to get .NET Core itself building um, on top of .NET uh, Core CLI. So. Okay. Uh, might we see MS products with support for restructured text then? Probably not. Probably, Probably not. not. We still have to sell everyone on it first before we get products that uh, support it. What's the best way to find issues to grab if you contribute to ASP.NET? It's hard to find if an issue is worked on or not. Alan Lindquist. Um I'm still trying to promote this idea of first-timers only. We should start tagging really like low-hanging yep. fruit ones as first-timers only. Maybe I, th I think, I mean, let me be completely honest. I think it's a great idea. I love it. We're not mature enough to really do the work required to curate those issues right now. And yeah, we're at we'd a have point. to have someone helping, yeah. like a person. Uh, we're, we're, at, we're at a point in our milestones right now where I don't really, we don't really need or want people <laughs> um, trying to like do quick fixes because that's not where we're at. We're like, like you said before, we're in full on, we need to get yeah. this stuff working and then we're going to stabilize and ship. Once we get that out, then we, sh we should talk well, about that again. I know Alan, he's a pretty sophisticated individual. Mm -hmm. 
what about sophisticated individuals? How do they get involved? It seems like it's a little bit challenging to. You, yeah, you read code and you talk on Jabber and you you make comments on issues. Like that's where we that's where we do our work. I see. That's that is challenging. All right. Um, AP, uh, ASP.NET uses a lot of extensions and a lot of extension uh, methods. Yep. Sometimes in separate packages. Can you improve IntelliSense so it shows extensions from unreferenced packages? Otherwise, you'll never discover the packages. That's a tough uh, one because it'll clutter everything. He's basically so saying that we have, have to know. We have we have talked about ideas like that. Actually, really? the problem is how many packages do you include them from, and which packages are they? That's obviously the issue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I actually, actually do great. have to drop now. Okay. So we nearly finished. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> All right, we're trying to finish. We're we're struggling. My computer's crashing also. Uh, <laughs> do you ever take breaks? Some weekends there are 100 posts and merges. Don't burn yourselves out. <laughs> we'll try not to, but I think Thank that you. they are working very hard. Uh, do you think Swift will affect C Sharp and ASP.NET in the future? I think at the I command think. line, possibly, but until there's a Swift web framework that is real competitor, no, I don't think it's a huge deal. But it's good. Swift, Go, Node, more stuff at the command line Rust. is good. Uh, how are the docs generated? Again, it's a public tool. It's read the docs. Yeah. Read the docs.org. Uh, they'll even host it for you. Um, maybe you could rename the Git repo Kestrel HTTP server. I think we renamed it already because we didn't like someone didn't like the fact that it was just called Kestrel. Um, we we tend not to have things that are just nouns that are unrelated to what they are. So while we like the name Kestrel, the compromise is that we had to call it Kestrel HTTP server. Gotcha. <sighs> and I mean the collective we. I have no. I have no problem with. No, that. I understand. Yeah. Uh, someone wants to know if there's anything post post V next next, like you know anything crazy for the future. Yeah, go check out the MVP summit videos from the yes. third day. I think that Steve Sanderson stuff was pretty cool. That's gonna we're gonna we're planning to ship a beta of that at the same time we ship our RTM. We will do that. The node yeah, but, stuff. Yeah, and we had a we had a, a session about ideas for Razor and Tag Helper Futures. We had a session about uh, possible web pages. Um, type frameworks that we might build in the future. So I think we had an EF futures talk as well. Da, 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 da. Any plan to revisit MVC tooling? It currently requires Node. I'm having trouble getting approval to get Node installed in my dev environment. MVC Node. tooling doesn't require. Oh, I guess he means like Visual Studio comes with Node. Now. No, I mean the problem is that. So this individual is saying they're having trouble getting Node installed in the development environment. Would you do me a favor? Uh, uh -huh. this Binertis, uh, uh, email me about this. This is the first time I've heard this, but I do know that I've heard people saying I can't install this open source project or that open source project at my job. Um, yeah. I haven't heard specific concerns about Node, but given that it's installed with Visual Studio, I'm interested mm -hmm. in why you need approval. Yeah. I mean, it's worst comes to worst, install Visual Studio on that development environment and use the version of Node that we ship with it. Right, but maybe they're not allowing it. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they're blocking it, but that's, that's interesting. Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I'd like to hear about that. Yeah. Uh, do you have any advice regarding conflicts and breaking changes regarding system.collections.immutable after no, VS 2015 update one on build servers? No, I'm sorry. It's very specific. I'm not really do sure. You want us? That would be a, uh, a uh, emo landverse emo. Yep. question. So email me and or emo and I will get you a, uh, we'll get you an answer. And then an individual saying, is it OK to send PRs for issues like this, where this is authentic authorization context conflicts in type with ASP.NET authorization? And they're talking about renaming it. Um, That's a, oh, OK. Um, is, it, is someone assigned? Is it being someone discussed? Is saying, it doesn't look like it's assigned. It's an open issue. It's being worked on, but it's not clear. Is nope. it? Well, so, yeah. yeah. So in this case here, discuss it on the issue. Yeah. So discuss it on the issue. But just for your information, if you look here, I'm looking through it and I see Elon, who's the engineering manager, yep. assigned Javier to do it. Javier switched from working to ready, did the work, and has right. a commit. Yeah. So, so it would have it been if you'd been involved in the conversation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, not anymore, but it would have been. All right. Cool. We did it. We're done. You're awesome. Thank Dramatic you. zoom. Zooming out now. Bum, 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 bum.